Jessica Hagman at Alden Library, and today I am here on the first floor of Alden um, in the Center for International Collections, and we're going to talk to uh, Araba Dawson Ando and uh, Lorraine Wachna, who are two subject librarians here at Alden, and they're going to tell us about some events that are coming up for Open Access Week um, and in support of textbook alternatives here at Alden Library. Um, so I'm going to turn you around and let you talk to them. Um, so if you could introduce yourselves and maybe tell us a little bit about what you mean by open access for people who haven't heard that term before. Sure. I'm Araba Dawson Ando, um, subject librarian for African Studies and uh, the Social Sciences. Um, I manage the African Studies collections and also uh, instruction and consultations and uh, my social sciences portfolio includes geography, international development. So you keep busy. <laughs> lots of working with lots of different departments. <laughs> yes. How about you, yes. Lorraine? Who are you working with these days? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Lorraine Wachna and I'm a performing arts librarian as mm -hmm. well as African American Studies librarian and English literature. So you're also keeping busy with lots of different yes. departments. Mm -hmm. All right, so Open Access Week is coming up in two weeks, um, and you both are working on groups that have events going on. So Open Access, what are we talking about? Okay, so both Lorena and I are in the um, COP for scholarly communication. So we work on the library's initiatives on Open Access, or on uh, Open Access and OERs. And uh, we have uh, various initi initiatives here. But uh, Open Access is uh, the free and immediate online access to the results of scholarly research and the right to use and, re and reuse these uh, results uh, without limitations or minimum mini uh, limitations. Yeah. And every year in October, there's Open Access Week. It's a global event where they use it as an opportunity to um, explain uh, what open access is and also to share its benefits and to educate the academic and research community on uh, the various initiatives available and uh, also uh, <coughs> to help inspire a wider participation in it. So uh, this year uh, uh, it's uh, Open Access Week, it's um, October 23rd through 29th, and in Alden we're going to have three events. And I'll let Lorraine talk about the first one, the OTN workshop. Yeah, we're going to start actually the week before, and it's going to be two different workshops uh, next Tuesday. One is for faculty, and OTN is the Open Textbook Network. And what we have done is invited faculty to join us, and we have about 40 faculty signed up. Oh. And we have two visitors coming, one from Ohio State and one from, I think, University of Michigan that are both scholarly communications librarians. Wait, from Ohio State and Michigan? Yes. That's kind of oh, funny. Yeah, well, <laughs> cool. Hopefully there won't be a game. Cool. Um, the presenters? Yes. The other one is from University of Massachusetts. Oh, I'm sorry, Amherst. Yeah. Amherst, yeah. Okay, totally okay. different, but totally sure. Different. Both starting with that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and in the morning, well, the faculty will do a workshop with them where they... The Open Textbook Network is, uh, they, they are working on textbook affordability for students. So we would like faculty to adopt Open Textbook for their classes. So in this um, session next Tuesday, faculty have been invited to come and work with these two different uh, librarians. And they also will be writing a review of different textbooks that are on their network. Um, Lots of textbooks are on the Open Textbook Network, and the more they get reviewed by faculty, the more likely they are to be adopted by other faculty. Mm -hmm. So but that's, a, that's a really good thing, and it's also kind of part of our answer to helping students with the cost of textbooks. And then in the afternoon, the librarians have a session where we then talk with the same two people from Amherst and Ohio State about what we can do as librarians to help Mm, promote open textbooks, how to discuss it with our faculty, um, you know, how to raise awareness about the benefits of open textbooks. And this is a continuation of some other activities that have been going on here, right? Like a number of faculty have already worked with their subject librarian to, to use either an open textbook or identify open materials or to use a library-based resource. Um, like I have a number of faculty in the Scripps College who've been 
working on using library resources instead of having students buy textbooks. Right. And yes. That was part of the project before. Yes, that's the library's um, alt textbook initiative, where we've had I think is it that two programs where we paid faculty money to um, help them with uh, providing uh, free resources for students as much as possible to lower their textbook cost because the state of Ohio has an, in, uh, a program where they require um, universities to uh, lower textbook cost. So mm -hmm. that's Ohio universities at times to uh, meet that um, um, government initiative, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've had two, the first one was, was it two years ago? And uh, we had several faculty, about 30 faculty participate. We had workshops in the library, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And then show them uh, what resources they can use and then what, uh, how to go about it and then last year we had sorry i don't remember i thought that was last year no we had two we've had two uh-oh yes. we had the workshop series last year right the, yes yeah. last year was the workshop series yes. and the year before yeah. was the actual yes yeah we so it's an ongoing it's, it's ongoing, ongoing. Yes. <laughs> we're, this is a continuation of this it's work. A continuation yes and yes. the workshop series was mm -hmm. six different events mm -hmm. that that's the last year yes we mm -hmm. sort of we, we um, demonstrated to faculty and uh, the different resources we have in the library that we already have purchased, that we already have access to, mm -hmm. in order to encourage them to use those resources in their classes. So that was, that was um, I think it was really helpful for faculty. I don't think they knew about all the different things that they could just use yes. mm -hmm. without paying any kind of money or charging their students any kind of money. Okay, so Open Access Week, there's a couple other events. Um, can you tell us about what's happening? Yes, uh, we have two events, and uh, our aim is to um, provide an opportunity for Ohio University research community to learn about open access publishing, its economic benefits to students and faculty, and to help inspire a wider participation in the initiatives that the library has been uh, providing. And uh, the first one will be on October 24th, uh, 4 to 5 p.m. at Alden Room 323. And it's uh, the title is Open Access Monographs, Current Initiatives, Sustainable Models. And four uh, presenters uh, from uh, the University of uh, Minnesota Twin Falls, University of Michigan Library, and then um, Assistant Director of Publishing and Operations at the University of California Press, and also uh, one person from the University of Ottawa Press. And they will talk about their monograph initiatives, and uh, the pro uh, program will be moderated by Kevin Smith, the Dean of Libraries at the University of Kansas. And he used to be, before his current position, he used to be the Director of um, Scholarly Communication at um, Duke University. Mm -hmm. So they're going to talk about these different uh, monograph uh, open access uh, initiatives and uh, there will also be opportunity to ask questions. And this program is for both librarians and faculty and we encourage faculty to attend and learn about these uh, different initiatives and how they can, it can benefit them in their um, uh, teaching. Okay. Yeah. And so this is really about, you said monographs, right? Like yes. books, like it's opening books, those monographs, up. monographs, books, yeah, monographs. Up. Which is different from like open access journal, not different, but a different kind of publishing model, of course, than open access articles, right? Like yes. it's a different kind of approach to yeah, get a book are, open access. These are books, yeah. And it's yeah. been sponsored by Lever Press, which is uh, a consortium of uh, um, many liberal arts colleges uh, who uh, want to, um, I think, publish a, uh, Monographs, so it's only on monographs, not articles. Okay. Yes. We had um, was it last year or two years ago? I can't keep track either. But um, we had an uh, high university faculty member who came right and talked about getting her book published. She had a monograph that was published open access through Knowledge Unlatched, was mm -hmm. it? Uh, yes. Jennifer Fredette. From, the Fredette from uh, yeah. Political Science. Yes. Yeah, we had it. It was one of the programs we organized mm -hmm. uh, on uh, open uh, on open access, and it was. Uh, 
I think we have four faculty members to talk about how they've used uh, open publishing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. So one of the, uh, the the presenters, one of them will talk about uh, both Lever Press and Knowledge Unlatched. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Knowledge Unlatched works with like university presses, right, to try to get funding from libraries, right. Thomas mm -hmm. libraries to make the books open access. Like they right. say, tell them the libraries fund. Mm -hmm. The book publication and then it's open access available to everyone is kind of a different funding model than like libraries just purchasing the book, right? Yes, it's a different funding model. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so then what is the other event that's happening? The other event is another webinar, and that will be on October 25th from 1 to 2 in Alden Room 323. Mm -hmm. And that is called What We Talk About When We Talk About Open Access, which is actually a good thing <laughs> um, because it's a it's a weekly term it's complete it, there are so many different models and different people adopting in different ways it's good to kind of just get a uh, an idea of what we mean in a basic way mm -hmm. um, because they want us to be able as subject librarians and faculty are welcome to this as well to be able to say what is open access mm -hmm to um, each other, to other faculty, for us to help discuss it with our faculty, and also why go with open access, how does it work, why would someone go down that road, how is it paid for, things like that. And then they're also going to talk about, they're going to show examples of open access, um, uh, what are the, um, yeah, they're going to give us some ideas about things we can use in our classes to talk about open access, or mm -hmm. even ways we can when we're teaching say, well, this, for example, is something you can use that's totally free mm -hmm. and open to all people, and it's there for you, mm -hmm. right? Great. So um, just to clarify, both of those are webinars, but we're hosting a showing of the webinars in the library, in right? In the library, yeah. Yes. Right. So webinars, you can come yeah. here and... Yes. Um, and watch those webinars together. And I imagine probably if you do that, you'll meet other people who are interested in this right. idea yes. of open access, of monographs, or other kind of publishing models. Okay, yeah. And it's also an opportunity to talk to each other, mm -hmm. and, uh, fac both faculty and librarians, to discuss um, these initiatives. And also, um, if we don't understand something, you can get clarification instead of you just sitting in your office and watching mm -hmm. it by yourself. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do people need to register, or they, can they just show up? Just show they can up. show us. No, okay. no registration required. Uh, no registration, yeah. And uh, there's going to be a blog post, I think, next week mm -hmm. about it. And you, if you, uh, there will be links to the detailed information, so people can look at it, or they can call us or send us an email if um, they want more details about the workshops okay. or the webinars. Yep. Whatever way you prefer to get in touch with us, we'll, yeah. we'll answer whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> and they might be mm -hmm. recorded, but I'm not sure. Uh, the I OTN mean, will be recorded. Right. But I mean, the other two webinars the other webinar. would likely to be... Yes, it will be recorded. So that yes. we could also send you links to the webinars yes. if you'd like to view them on your own. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add about Open Access Week or anything? Um, one thing that's really interesting that I do want to say is that we have quite a few people, uh, librarians, and I believe faculty participating in the Open Textbook um, workshop next week from the regional campuses. Yes. Oh, that's it's awesome. really nice. Yes. I think About every regional yeah. campus is being uh, represented, yeah. oh. which is really great because yeah. they have even more economical problems than we do over here mm -hmm. with their mm -hmm. budgets and things. Yeah. So it's nice that the regionals will be on board with all this. So a truly university wide right. event. Yes. Awesome. Right. Yes, yeah. And uh, we're encouraging everybody to attend and. Uh, also, um, try and look into open access publishing and how it will uh, benefit uh, students economically because I think mm -hmm. it's an important issue since textbooks are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they keep going up. Yeah. And I would say if you need more or you want to understand more, if you go to our webpage and just search in the search box for open access. You'll see about five different articles about it, mm -hmm. describing it, talking about different initiatives, different places you can look for open textbooks. It doesn't cost anything to go on the websites and look at the open textbooks. Mm -hmm. That's why they're open. So you can, on your own, do whatever you want in those mm -hmm. um, databases. 
Um, and, and that includes, I just want to mention, that includes things like primary source materials well, as well. Like, we, like we've supported the, um, of course, I can't think of what the project is. Reve yeah, is that the one where they do the primary source collections? Then yeah. they, like, the library support the digitization of the collection, right. and then everyone gets access to that material as well. Right. Yes, yeah, yeah, there's a, a lot of those in, a lot of universities and a lot of, uh, even museums and all that have uh, mm -hmm. primary sources digitized. And uh, instead of, you know, traveling to, let's say, Washington, D.C. or mm -hmm. Louisiana to uh, use uh, a primary source material, you can just use a digitized copy online mm -hmm. for free. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn the camera back around and uh, say thanks to Arabel and Lorraine and the rest of the community of practice mm -hmm. for continuing um, the conversation around open access on the Ohio University campus. Um, I think in the next you know, decade, we're going to see a lot of exciting changes when it comes mm -hmm. to how things are published and shared um, around uh, the world, really. And I'm excited that we get to be a part of this. So thanks to everyone. Um, once again, as a reminder, we'll have um, information on our website about the Open Textbook, Open Textbook Network um, uh, event next week. And then the week after is Open Access Week. You can find, I'm sure, lots of celebration online. We'll be tweeting about it at Alden Library. Um, and then we have two webinars that you can attend in person to learn more and to kind of talk to other people on campus who are interested in that as well. So thanks for watching, and we will talk to you later.